Christina Cola here. Welcome to Tubed Up. Let me explain to you what's going on here. This is going to be kind of a little bit of a mini-series dedicated to one of the greatest inventions of all time, the tube amplifier. Now, as a guy who once swore by solid-state amps and distortion boxes, let me tell you that ever since I've turned a full 180 degrees on that, I've never been happier with my sound. And uh, no matter what kind of music you play, no matter what kind of band you're in, I can assure you there's a tube amp out there for you. I love them, they're great, nothing sounds better. Now I'm far from the only guitar player to tell you the same thing. Ten to one, if you're a real musician and a real guitar player, uh, most if not all of your heroes use tube amps. Uh, but there's a catch with tube amps. Uh, if you're a young or novice player, you might be finding it a little difficult to get the kind of sound you want out of them. Maybe it's uh, you're not getting enough power, maybe it's too muddy, maybe it's too bright, maybe you're just not getting enough distortion. Well, that's where I come in. Uh, unlike solid states, uh, proper operation of a tube amp requires a little bit of know-how. You've got to spend some time with it. Now, you might be thinking, well, hey, I have one of those Line 6 amps, and it took me hours to figure out how all the presets in it worked. That's not what I'm talking about. This is a whole different world here. Now, if you want to get a real guitar sound, you kind of have to know what makes tube amps tick and how to find that magic sweet spot on the dial there. Uh, but once you figure it out and you get it right, it'll give you sounds that no solid state, no matter how good it is, can reproduce. But then there's the rectifier crowd, and uh, sure, a Mesa dual rectifier, it's got all the distortion you'll ever need, and then some, but 90%, if not more, of the people that I see using them have absolutely no idea how to operate them, and they sound horrible. Uh, some of these guys have been using rectifiers since they first came out, and they still don't know how to work them properly. And a lot of them, I can tell, probably bought them because they were, at the time when they first came out, the most distorted amps you can get, and they were inspired by Eddie Van Halen's enormous sound. The thing is, the reason that Eddie Van Halen was able to get the sound that he got at the time that he got it, before super high gain amps, uh, is because he knew how to work tube amps. He understood them, he knew what made them tick. Uh, sadly, most people these days do not. Uh, the thing about a good tube amp is that it's not about distortion, it's about overdrive. It's not about volume, it's about power. And it's not about a preset sound or a, a specific, you know, thing that you dial in. It's about the sound of your guitar. And that's what makes tube amps great. So, whether you're a veteran or a novice, I've got something for you here. Uh, this will be all about the appreciation of tube amps. Uh, I've got a few on the list here, and we're going to break them down and see what they can do. Uh, but since some of them are so versatile, I'm going to work in sections here, and I'm not necessarily going to be doing this on a regular basis, so this will be more of a mini-series than a regular show. Uh, but we are going to go through quite a few things here, and I think uh, you should get your money's worth. Hey, wait a minute, this is free. Now this is not going to necessarily be a review show where I'm going to be rating apps on a scale of 1 to 10 or checking out the latest hot gear or not necessarily even endorsing uh, any particular amp. Uh, what I'm really going to do is just kind of demonstrate uh, what the different amps can do, take a look at some differences and similarities, and point out a few common threads that run through most if not all of tube amps. Now, while I'm not necessarily against solid-state amps, as far as I'm concerned, there's just no substitute for real hot tubes. You know, with all the new solid-state technology and digital amp simulation and everything they've got going now, I don't think they're any closer to rendering tubes obsolete than they were the day before the first tube amp was built. Uh, they have, uh, solid states have their place, and there are some really nice ones out there. And as much as I love my PV trans tubes, uh, they, even those, uh, fall short against my Soldano Hot Rod Avenger 100. Now, the reason I decided to do this is very simple. It's because I am sick and tired of seeing guitar players who share my view about tube amps, but have absolutely no idea how to use them. Bottom line, if you're running your preamp gain on a tube amp all the way up, you're completely defeating the purpose of having a tube amp to begin with. The great thing about tube amps is that they respond dynamically to varying input levels. So when you max out the saturation in the preamp, you're just creating a simple black and white signal that has no room to move. It's really the same result of an overprocessed solid state amp. When you take the sound and force it to be one thing, it can't become anything else, regardless of what you're running it through or even what it was to begin with. Uh, but when you give the tubes room to breathe, what you end up with is a natural sound, the natural sound of your guitar overdriven and amplified into a, a real organic kind of sound that with a little know-how you can control completely and, and manipulate it any way you want. 
So enough talk, let's get on with things here. I'm going to demonstrate a few different tube amps, give you some ideas on how to really make them sing. So if you want to get the most out of this, be plugged into your amp as you watch. Uh, the idea is to get your amp to sing. I can only go so far with demonstration. Uh, I'm not looking to have you copy my settings or anything like that. I'm here to give you an idea of how to really get the best sound out of your amp and get you a setting that you can tweak a little bit to get your sound to really come through. Now also, we're rarely, if ever, going to be using any type of distortion pedal. If you're plugged into one, unplug it. Just plug your guitar straight into your amp uh, like I have right now. Uh, we're going bare bones here with only one exception, the Ibanez Tube Screamer. And I'll explain why later. Uh, but for now, let's just go straight into the amp. And uh, I'm only going to give you one rule. Don't ever max out your gain on your preamp, on this tube amp, especially if you've got a high gain amp, don't ever turn that knob all the way up ever again. Everybody with me? Okay. So let's begin. The first amp we're going to be looking at, in case you haven't guessed, is the Marshall JVM 210. If you have one, plug into it, get it heated up, and stick around for the next installment of Tubed Up. I'll see you later. 